Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to the EmpowerCast iWork series. This is episode 12 of a 12-part series on the color inspector and object fills. In this episode, we're looking at the tinted image fill option, as well as a really useful hint for making shapes editable when the need arises to emulate sort of a 3D look. So I'm going to dive over here in the keynote, get started. And I just have a blank theme here. And I'm going to get rid of the default text boxes by clicking on them and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. I'm going to create a shape, a rounded rectangle. So in the previous episodes of the EmpowerCast iWork series, we've looked at the various kinds of fills from color fill to gradient fill, advanced gradient fill, image fill, and today we're covering tinted image fill. So I'm going to click on tinted image fill and that brings up a dialog box for me to choose which image I want to fill that shape with. So I'm just going to go into my art folder here and just choose any image to fill that shape with. And I'll choose this globe here. In my opinion, tinted image fill is the least useful fill option in the graphic inspector. Tinted image fill behaves identically to image fill. So in the inspector I have all the various options like I had with image fill, such as stretch, scale to fill, scale to fit, original size, and tile. All of these have been covered in previous versions of EmpowerCast. The difference with tinted image fill is this little swatch box here below tinted image fill option. That swatch box allows me to choose a tint color for the image. Strange because it doesn't literally tint the image, it just overlays the color and you can adjust the opacity of the color. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to select scale to fill for my image size and click on the swatch to select a color. So I selected cayenne from the crayon box and the shape I created was filled with the color cayenne. The image is behind the color so there's no way to access the image unless I reduce the opacity of the color. So I'll go to my Colors Inspector, to the Opacity slider in the Colors Inspector. Not to be confused with the Opacity slider up here in the Graphic Inspector. No, we want the Opacity slider in the Colors Inspector. And as I lower the Opacity, you can see that the image begins to show through the color overlay. Now please, if you found a use for this feature, I'm curious to know what that is and please leave it in the comments or give me a video response. I'd love to see how you found this feature useful. And that's really all I have to say about tinted image fill. Again, in my opinion, the least useful fill option in the graphic inspector. As we close out the EmpowerCast iWork series, color fills and image fills, I'd like to kind of bring it together with a little known feature that I think is really useful. So I have this graphic of a cardboard box that I found by searching Google for cardboard box. And I'd like to demonstrate the ability to mock 3D using Keynote. I'm very interested in 3D applications like Maya and even Motion has some 3D functions I think are very exciting. But admittedly, getting into a 3D application, there's a huge learning curve, especially if you've never navigated in a 3D environment before. And many of you who are listening to this tutorial will never bother with 3D applications because, well, quite frankly, the learning curve is just too steep. So what I'm going to do here is just show a quick and dirty way to mimic 3D in those emergency situations where you just want to make a, a quick change. So I have this cardboard box here and what I'd like to do is change the face of this cardboard box to a different color. Right now it's plain brown cardboard but maybe I want to make it more festive for the holidays. So what I'm going to do is put a shape here on the canvas under the shapes menu. I'm just going to choose a square. By default it's just not possible to cover the geometry of this box with a shape. Now I could create my own shape under the shapes menu using the Bezier tool. But again, for most of you, the Bezier tool carries a hefty learning curve, especially if you've never used Bezier before. 
To some of us, it's simple. To others, it's quite frustrating. This tip is a way for you to get around the Bezier tool, but still get very similar effects. So I'm going to leave the Bezier tool alone for now and just take this simple shape we created. In iWork 09, but not previous versions, if I pull down the Format menu, I have the option under Shape to click Make Editable. What that's done is created editable points within that shape. So as you can see here, the standard resize handles, which we're used to, have turned into red dots. Those red dots are actually points along the shape's path, and they've now become editable. Don't let all that jargon confuse you. Just follow me here. So if I grab those new red points, like for instance, I'm going to take this upper right corner of my shape and match it with this upper right corner of my box. Click and drag. I'm going to get it as close to that corner as I can. Now I'm going to match this upper left hand corner with the upper left hand corner of my box. So I'll click on my new edit point and drag and match that up with the upper left hand corner of my box. Now I'm going to click on the lower right edit point, drag that to the lower right corner of my box, then the lower left edit point, drag that to the lower left corner of my box. I've now essentially mimicked the geometric 3D plane of this box by making the shape's points editable and quite simply just dragging them to match the corners. Very simple, even for somebody with no experience in using 3D software. Now, if you look closely, I have some fine tuning to do here. In fact, I'll zoom in to 200%. And notice I didn't quite get the edge of the box. So if I just click on the shape once, I get the traditional resize handles, like we're all used to. If I click that shape twice, my red edit points come back. So I can re-edit them anytime. Now, I'm having difficulty getting right on the corner there because my snap to guides is turned on. And I'm snapping to these yellow guides and it's kind of hindering my freedom to get exactly where I want to go. So while I'm dragging to temporarily turn off the snap to guides feature, I just hold down the command key on my keyboard. I'm no longer snapping to any guides and I have total freedom to drop that point exactly where I want. So I'm just going to get it right up in the corner there and drop it. Perfect. I'm going to head down to the lower right corner, click and drag, and notice again my freedom is taken away by these yellow guides that keep snapping. I'm going to hold the command key again, get my total freedom back, and drop that point exactly where I want it. Now I'm just going to zoom back out to the fit in window view, and great, I've covered up one side of the box sort of mimicking the 3D features found in most advanced 3D applications. Now let's give this a little bit of a gradient so it matches the 3D look of the other sides of the box. As we learned in previous episodes of the EmpowerCast iWork series, instead of choosing Color Fill, I'm going to scroll down to Gradient Fill under the Fill Inspector. And here I have a linear gradient starting gray at the top, working its way to black. Now this doesn't make a great match because my linear gradient is running horizontal at 90 degrees. This edge is at about 30 or so degrees. So I want to change that gradient's angle by clicking on my little knob here until it looks right for the box. There, I've changed the angle of the gradient and it really gives that box a look as though it's part of the 3D object that I originally had. If I choose my new shape, hold the shift key and choose the image at the same time and under arrange choose group there now the two are stuck together I can even resize the image and my shape will resize right along with it making for a quick and easy 3d type effect right here within keynote the same effect works in pages as well as iWeb hey, I want to thank you for tuning in to the final episode of the EmpowerCast iWork series Stay tuned for the next 12 episode series coming soon. Please subscribe, leave us some comments, and some ratings. Thank you for tuning in.